Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Insured the Board Game. In the game Insured, you're going to be playing as an animal and you're going to have an ability or two and those abilities are going to help you throughout the game. Now the way the game works necessarily is going to be taking your character, your spirit or coins I should say, and your health and you're also going to be taking his the card. And events are going to pop up on the board and you're going to try and draw for luck to uh, hopefully not be affected by these events. But if you are, you could suffer damage. Now of course you might have certain and shields that will protect you from those things and if you do have them you can gain as opposed to lose but at what cost now the game is basically going to be about ensuring your survival of your specific species as uh these different world events take place the landscape gets harder and harder and uh basically you're trying to be the last person left alive or if you can get 20 coins or 20 hearts you can additionally win all right let's go ahead and show you the game and all the components so here we have insured the board game and everything that comes included now as you can see these are the character cards here and every character card is going to get a hearts or a health tracker and a coins tracker and these are all the different characters and of course it'll have their uh, their different symbols on the back as well as the cards needed for that character each character in addition to having the artwork on one side also has the explanation of their character on the other side which includes their health total and their coin total as well as their ability and what they can do depending on uh, which turn is active whether it's the even or the odd round this character has an interesting ability that lets him gain coins throughout the game which is a good way for, for you to win the game. If it gets to 20 here or 20 here, you can win. This is the active player token that gets moved around throughout the game, and the person who's the active player is the one who's going to have the token. These over here are going to be tokens that are going to be used to simu simulate your hearts, your coins, and your shields. There's three different types of shields. You have the shield basic shield stones, you have the uh, multi shield stones, and then you have the omni shield stone, which only certain people can get, but it's very, very powerful and lets you block all the different things for a high cost. These are the little coin values here. Uh, these are world events, which I put up, put up one right here. These are nasty things that can affect you based on the gameplay, and you're going to be drawing them every round. This one says a fire, and this is like an earth-type symbol or a light symbol. And then over here is whether or not you're going to get affected by the event. You take these cards here, you shuffle them all up, and depending on the uh, number of players in the game, is going to depend on whether you're going to be affected or not, because uh, you're going to be able to choose one of these guides and flip it over, uh, and you're not affected by the event. Certain players will get affected by the event, though, as you can see, and these are going to be the cards you're going to utilize that. You'll, of course, get the box as well as the rule book. And that's pretty much you're getting the game uh, insured. All right, let's talk about it. So once everybody has gathered their character as well as put their health and coins on their track based on that character and looked at your special ability, you're ready to begin the game. Simply start a active player, start with round one, put out all the shield stones as well as their markers that you can utilize, and then allow people to buy shields. After, of course, they buy shields, uh, remember that only one per one of each, one only uh, you can only purchase the multi or uh, sorry, omni shield stone once a game per player, provided that you can even use it based on your character. Um, and then after everybody's got their shield stones, you're going to move on to the event phase, where you flip over one of those events, and then you're going to see if you're affected by drawing one of those cards, kind of a, a, a luck scenario, whether you get affected or not. And then after that, you're going to resolve the effect, whether it's going to be taking damage or gaining health or doing nothing at all. And of course, there's certain abilities like the puppeteer who can influence how the cards are drawn, which can happen beforehand, and other abilities that can happen throughout the round. After that happens, the next round begins, and you continue like such. All you're going to be doing is basically trying to get the shield stones that you need to protect yourself, as well as gaining coins and health, using your ability to mess with other players, and uh, chancing it by drawing those uh, th these cards or these fake cards, hoping you do not get affected by the events, because if you don't, good news for you. Stay alive, gather your resources, win the game. All right, let's go down below, and I'll show you one turn. Back to the game, insured the board game, and I went ahead and just set it up for one player, just to give you an idea of how it works. Of course, he's the active player. This event's going to go up here, and it is the odd round. In general, you're going to be playing three players, so I set up the board for three. These little fake cards here that can affect you in some way. And in uh, this case, he's going to choose one of, one of these shield stones most likely. He'll probably go ahead and pick this multi-shield stone, which is not too bad, but it's going to cost him, and you're going to lose uh, coins on this track here when you do. You also look at his special ability. It says um, active round two, uh, you gain one coin. Pretty useful right there, I suppose. And he's got his four health here and now he's down his coins uh, these are going to go back up here and other players are also going to be able to buy stones as well uh, and these are going to be able to protect them and the protection value is down here in the bottom this one except uh, is actually at the top here because it's all of them all right but it has a higher cost then after that you're going to go ahead and flip over one of these 
these events here. Radiation, for instance. And radiation is going to affect, uh, if you don't have fire and if you don't have light, you're going to take damage based on the symbols here. But first, let's see if we're affected. So we'll just draw one of these guys here. I am affected. And in which case, I am going to have to take damage unless I have a shield stone to protect me. So in this case, I do have these two here. So I would lose one durability. The refund value would go down one. Every time you lose a durability, you lose a refund value. And then you're going to be able to heal uh, for each damage you would have taken due to the fact that you had those shield stones that are protecting you, which is pretty nice, right? So he's going to heal that health there. Every other player would also do the same thing here. And as you can see in a three player game, there's uh, two affecteds and two not affecteds like that. So uh, it's 50 50 almost whether that's going to happen to you or not. After that case is done, this is going to get discarded and you're going to continue the round by buying more shield stones, utilizing abilities and whatnot. There are a couple interesting events as well, like the Gates of Hell and the uh, World Blessing, which if you get affected by these events, you're either going to heal or you're going to simply take damage. They don't, these are unique symbols that have their own different events that are going to happen throughout the course of the game. And every different player has different abilities. Like for instance, this one can uh, sacrifice health from the uh, fate curse of the player for that round and the player loses one health of that player uh, player's fate is revealed different than the fate of the demon. So you, he can actually hurt you throughout the game. Uh, this is gain one coin from one player who is willing to be immune for the round. Uh, Void will lose its immunity for the round. So you can gain at the cost of something else. And it also has a passivity, passive of immune to other character abilities. So people can't mess with this guy specifically. And there's quite a few other characters that do different things. Um, of course, you know, some, some of them are going to sacrifice and help. Some of them are going to simply hurt and others are going to have some kind of in-between ability. But that's basically the game of Insured, moving the rounds back and forth throughout uh, as, as each event takes place and the active player as well. And remember that only certain abilities will happen during certain rounds. But that is basically the game. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so a couple caveats now before we get into the review. The first thing is you can choose any shield stones you want. They're just stacked up and you can go ahead and pick them as you so choose. And also when your shield stone runs down to zero on the loan value, because every round your loan is going to go down. If it didn't, if it, depending on how much refund value it's at, it's going to give you coins. So they can technically give you more coins if it doesn't deal, take damage, but it can give you health if it does, prevent, pretending, protecting you from dying, which is really important. Uh, and those are mainly the different aspects. Of course, the other events that can occur that are random that are uh, either going to help you or uh, hurt you, depending on whether you're affected or not. And every character has unique abilities as well. 20 or 20, co 20 coins or 20 HP to win, as well as being the last player I left alive. Now, so what do I think about this game? Well, first of all, I like the artwork. It reminds me of Watership Down. It has like a clip art style, like dark theme. The theme of, of itself it does work in the game. It feels like you're doing your best to stay alive or to gain as much resources as possible while trying to avoid the other players and also trying to work with them to some extent only to meet your own end goal, which is to win the game. There's a little bit of cooperative, a little bit of competitive, and a, little, a lot of bit of trying to decide what you want to do to best help yourself. All the characters play according to the character type. The demon is obviously trying to hurt people. Uh, the uh, This panther guy here, is the void, I guess is what you call him, is basically actively trying to uh, help players, but at the same time is not able to be attacked or hurt by other players. So they all have like interesting, unique things. Some gain coins, some gain health, some sacrifice health to help other players. So that kind of adds to the social aspect of the game. Um, the I do like the clip art probably better than I like the basic art of the game, although the basic art of the game is not too bad either. It's a little, little bit of a fox, a little kitsune. And of course the randomness in the game. There is randomness as for what event pops up. It might be somewhat beneficial, which is not as likely. Um, it's definitely probably going to hurt you. But uh, it depends on whether you're affected or not. And that depends on the number of players and what cards you draw. The cards are going to be affected based on the characters as to how you're going to be drawing them and what the turn right, what the turn is. But you also have an idea, kind of, of what is coming up based on the events that have previously passed. So if you've seen a lot of water events, it's likely that another water isn't going to pop up. So you might not get want to get a water shield stone. Well, that is unless you do, because if that shield stone doesn't take damage, you're going to get a refund of more money than you actually put into it. So. It has that going for it. Also, the rounds change uh, different players' abilities. Some players act on round one. Some players act on round two, uh, you know, back and forth. And that is going to basically give you the opportunity to use certain abilities that you normally couldn't use, which changes the game up. It's, it, it's, it's a lot of chance. It's a lot of randomness. 
But the character abilities and the shield stones give you that oomph to change the way the game is being played. Uh, for me, it's right down the line. If it's something that'd be interesting for you, go ahead and check out in the description below. Insured the board game, this crazy uh, animal fight for survival paddle royale type game on Kickstarter. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you're interested in taking a look at this game, go ahead and check out the description below. Currently on Kickstarter, I uh, insured the board game. Animals fighting each other to the death. Uh, little dark, little dark. Also, Lame Tame and Insane, walkthrough coming soon. I haven't forgot. It's here, looking great. I'm just waiting for the right players. If you're interested in a drinking game, check that out. Unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaway, Kickstarter lists, and more all on the site. You can go ahead and check out all the latest Kickstarter games because we update it weekly, as well as all the games we're currently giving away, one being All Your Base, the last of last card game. Also, don't forget to check out my friends at everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek, two great sites. They give even more posts and giveaways than my own. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to ensuring the fate of your specific race or character type uh, of, of animal types forever, I guess.